So when my Korean mom used mm-hmm. to get mad at me, she would use swear words. And she would swear at you. <laughs> yeah, she would swear at me. And the words that she swears, every time I tell the other Korean person what my mom used to tell me, they'll be shocked. Uh, oh, that she there. would say that So it's pr- probably a really bad word. I don't know if I should say oh. on the video. <laughs> guess what when my dad gets mad at me he asked me what do you think you did wrong oh and that's a japanese dad sorry my japanese dad would just tell me what do you think you did wrong and i have to answer myself Mm, like convict yourself (laughs) yeah yeah, convict myself and in this episode i do want to ask you what your parents told you uh, when they're in a bad mood or when they're angry. Yeah. yeah. And this is a Wube Matcha podcast. My name is Elisha Terada. I'm half Japanese, half Korean, and I grew up in Japan. And I'm Leah. My last name is the same because we're married. Mm-hmm. I'm Filipino American and we talk about Asian life in the US. Yep. So first question, how often did your parents get mad? Especially when you're young and little. I felt like they were mad all the time when I was a kid. <laughs> they would probably say otherwise now, but I mean, I don't like know. I said, based on what I've witnessed, okay, I hear scream almost like every day when uh, I. Oh well, like they get mad at each other. Well, I think they just get annoyed at each other, and it sounds like being angry at each other because I think oh, okay. Filipino people are very emotive, or at least my family is very emotive. I actually don't even know if all Filipino families are like. I'm sure they're not. I think in general my family is very emotive um can be very moody my Mm -hmm. uncle even said that's a quality of our family being moody so i mean he was like half joking but i'm like yeah it probably is because i feel like there was a lot of so especially especially moody family (laughs) so yeah i feel like as a kid my parents were working a lot so Mm -hmm. they didn't want to deal with both of them working trouble yes and there was three of us and so like if we got into a fight or a disagreement or if we did something that they didn't like, mm-hmm. we got in trouble. Do you think when they're mad that it was like a reasonable? Like if you mm-hmm. do something bad, of course, like yeah. yeah, you get punished or you get disciplined, right? But what's the ratio of like a reasonably like, you know, discipline versus like they're just in a bad mood and they're just like I think it really just depends like how much trouble I cause or how much trouble like you know, your siblings cause think maybe if I did break a lot of things as a kid. So, and I don't know, I think now I'm like, well, things get broken. So it's like, okay, well it's a thing. Right. But uh, my parents would get angry about that, you know, and maybe you could argue that, well, it's just an object. Right. But you know, is, but is it big- maybe it's something important to them. So that's why they got angry versus like I did some other stupid things. Like I put my foot through a fan, like a revolving oh. fan as a kid. And like my my mom got mad, which like in a way it's like that kind of just makes sense because it's like, great. Now we have to go to the emergency room and you have to get stitches because you, you're you <laughs> stupid and like you were playing on top of a fan. I don't know. I did a lot of dumb things like that as a kid. So then it's like. Yeah, you're hurt. And like you would think like, oh, shouldn't you try to be understanding about your kid because I got hurt? But then it's also like, yeah, but now I have to go to the hospital and like Mm. I have to pay to get you all fixed up because you decided to do something dumb, right? So I think it really just depends on like what you did, right? But then like as a kid, I feel like you're maybe because like I was like all over the place as a kid. Maybe I have to assume that. If I have my own kid, like they might be all over the place too. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. mean, I can still, I can still see you. I guess you don't break things. I guess I break more things wow. by accident. Yeah, you keep breaking glasses. Yeah, when I wash things, but like, <laughs> I don't think we're like that careless. It might just be dexterity of kid, just, just not. As yeah, good and or I something. mean, I do. I think carry some of that. Like you know, you broke one of my glasses. Mm-hmm. My oh. Starbucks glass, oh, my Starbucks. Oh, it's coming from it's coming from your parents. <laughs> so I'm like, huh, I wonder where that came from. Yeah, it probably came, came from, from your parents. My parents. I got like really mad. And I yeah, crying. you got really mad and crying out of anger. I and I was like, we can just order another one from eBay. <laughs> I'm like, no, you can't order another one. I'm yeah, like so mad. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so yeah, and I, I think some of that comes from your parents, right? So it might seem comical, but I think some of like the trouble I got into was kind of serious. But uh, I remember though, I mean, my parents would speak to me in a mix of English and Tagalog, mm. but usually when they got angry, it was more Tagalog. Maybe because they couldn't, I wonder if it's because they couldn't express their anger exactly the way they wanted to in English, right? Because it's not their first language. So it's easier for them to just like naturally let the words flow in Tagalog. Yeah. Okay. What are some words you remember? Well, like if I was like hard headed and started like talking back, uh, my parents would say, like, just fine, live, like, just live whatever you want, do whatever you want with your life. Like, if you're not going to listen to me, just do whatever you want. And they said that a lot. So that's why I remember oh, that phrase. Oh, interesting. Just like, it's like basically like, yeah, it's up to you to like, just do whatever you want now with your life. Oh, if you're not gonna, but then the undertone okay. is because you're not listening to me. That's the unsaid part of that got phrase. It, like, you're not listening to me. So just do whatever you want with your life. So yeah, my... Parents would say that, that if I was being hard headed. Is that like a mean expression or is it just like. It's almost like I'm fed up and I don't want to talk to you anymore about this because you're not listening. So just do whatever you want. Like you're it, not listening to me anyway. But is it in like a like a disciplining way? Like like hey it's, it's only going to hurt you yeah. or is it more like like a mean thing or is it like just the same well it's almost like giving up i think okay. like it's at the end of a conversation or end at the argument because uh, it's like well if you're not going to listen to me then just you know live your life you you seem like you know everything type uh, thing so just like, like storming do out yeah it just become yeah it's like the end like i don't want to do with this anymore type thing so and that was your mom or dad both. I feel like my mom said it more, okay. but I feel like I was disciplined more by my mom in general. Okay. My mom like, probably was like more of the disciplinarian. Uh, I mean, I think my dad would probably be similar to your mom, maybe swearing a lot. My dad just oh, like swore a lot. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I would swear a lot. To go, <laughs> so I learned a lot of like swear words. Swear words that maybe not yeah. safe but to then, like, say on the very, video. Yeah. 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 <laughs> He swore at like a lot of other things to like if you drop something or I don't know. So it's like, yeah, that seemed to be like his go to like angry. And I wonder if that's also yeah. coming from their parents, right? Like, so yeah. it's your grandma, your grandparents. That's like how they were treated mm -hmm. when they're little. Like, yeah. possibly they're repeating the same thing, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were there any like unreasonable anger that? Mm. That they kind of had a wrath on you, but you felt like that was unreasonable. Or if you think about it now, it's just parents couldn't handle the situation um, where like we ourselves could be immature when mm -hmm. they become parents and when we might become mad at something. Mm. It's like, well, you're just being frustrated, but like it's something the kid just needed to learn mm. or like. It's it's more on me or us to be understanding the situation and guide them into the right way instead of like being frustrated. But were there any I mean, I memories like that? My parents like mean well in general, so I feel like I feel like a lot of anger probably maybe it was more extreme because they were tired or stressed out right from work, and now that we're older, we see like you're tired and you don't want to deal with any more stress. And then if you have kids running around, which we don't have kids, I don't have a kid mm, yet. So yet. I, I don't know, right? Like how stressful it can be when you just want some downtime, but then your kid is like making a fuss or like causing mm -hmm. a racket. Breaking and, things. Yeah. I putting mean, their foot in like the I said, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know for some reason now I'm just remembering dumb sh stuff i was doing mm. as a kid like i think i kicked like a soccer ball or something inside the house and then i broke the glass of like one why of is the there swipes? even a soccer ball in the first place though like that <laughs> i would argue that parent probably should okay, wow. know better if there's a ball <laughs> it's gonna be kicked right <laughs> i don't know like and so like yeah i kicked it and then broke uh, the, the glass. glass of the display, yeah, yeah, yeah. China cabinet type thing. Yeah. My mom puts her displays. I got in trouble for that, which I think that's justified, right? In a way, because it's like, why was I even kicking a ball inside the house, right? But uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I think, yeah, a lot of it. I mean, I feel like probably deserved a lot of the discipline, but maybe some of it 
was extreme. I mean, I don't know about you, but my generation was also, we also grew up getting hit with like slippers and other objects. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of Asian families can yeah. relate because in Asian culture, at least back then discipline was like, yeah. I'm going to hit you, you know, with like a chineras, which is like a slipper. Right. My <laughs> mom like, oh, used yeah. their closing hanger. Oh, the yeah. Hanger. That's yeah. what my mom did. That was another common weapon. <laughs> my dad may have just used his like hand to slap my butt. Like, yeah. To discipline. Yeah. And then I would always like be scared or cry or like uh, try to escape from the situation. Right. Yeah. 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 That was definitely a common thing back in the generation because I'm pretty sure they were raised that way. Yeah. But in our generation, palo. <laughs> what, what is it? What is it? Gusto un palo. Gusto un palo. Like, do you want me to hit you? Like, yeah, <laughs> <Gusto> do <un palo. laughs> yeah, So wow, now you can't say that because you're gonna go to police. Right? <laughs> well, <laughs> I feel palo. like yeah, now right. If you try to hit Gen Z, they're gonna call the police on you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I heard that like school teachers are like pretty much watching for the signs of oh, like potential abuse, abuse, in right? The house, so yeah. now you can't discipline your kid physically. Yeah, and I think right. we know now. I think there's studies they've done on it, right? That yeah. it doesn't help <laughs> necessarily to raise better kids, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I think there's more science behind. Like, I, it's probably not the best way to discipline I, children. Yeah, I think we're on the unique millennial. I think millennials are the unique generation where mm -hmm. we've seen things happen with our parents, like a boomer generation, and we know better. There's a lot of scientific mm -hmm. researches. Internet has a lot of information on best practices. Yeah. Doctors and all these informations are just available. So we can't pretend like we don't know any better and just yeah. do whatever that used to be in the past, right? Like yeah. we have to be the generation that starts out with the scientifically backed understanding of how to mm -hmm. raise children right right yeah i think there is also more a mental health mm -hmm. uh, awareness too. awareness yeah. and also just that we talk about these issues mm. more whereas back then i feel like maybe things were like hard and it was mm. really hard to talk about how you felt about things or what you really mean behind like words or you know actions and so do you, do you discipline think, was more like hitting sometimes not all the time but yeah. yeah do you think like a movie beef by ali wong the tv show tv show was it tv show yeah on netflix and mm -hmm. maybe on other ones is kind of like maybe symbolizing what you were saying about like they're back back in the time there are a lot of you know our emotional like garbages that were never addressed Especially oh, I see. And yeah. that affects mm -hmm. like our generation, right? Millennial yeah. generation. But our hopefully our younger generation, Gen Z and the next generation, they know better that they have mm -hmm. help, that they know yeah. it's like it's just like going to the hospital that they know that mm -hmm. they need to fix up. I mean, I think in Asian families is a lot of just like sucking it up, like life mm -hmm. is hard. Mm -hmm. So like yeah. why complain? Like you need to study and work hard mm -hmm. and not everything is meant to be enjoyed. Mm. Sometimes you just have to suffer mm. through things. So I, I think I kind of see that mentality. And I'm not sure if that's common with um, Western parents or, you know, other cultures. But I definitely see uh -huh. that more in like Asian families. Not all of them, but I see that a lot more prevalent. And you're in a unique situation, just like the many Asian Americans who grew up in U.S. Yeah. But had a parent who came from Asia as mm -hmm. the first immigrant, right? Yeah. So you're directly getting this mixed message about how you should be as the member of American society versus how you should be as like a Filipino. Yeah, right? that's true. I was thinking to communicating now with like my parents I feel like maybe a lot of the discipline I got or the trouble I got into or arguments mm. that happened between me and my parents were more like they didn't understand. We couldn't communicate clearly with each other because English is not their first language. Oh, and I don't speak the Galug. 
if you can well. understand it. I right? understand it, but I don't speak it back to them. And maybe a lot of arguments could have simmered down faster, maybe not happen if we could have actually just communicated. Mm. But they misunderstood the situation, maybe assumed the worst because mm -hmm. they couldn't understand mm -hmm. maybe what I was explaining. Or maybe like they didn't care. I mean, a lot of parents too, right? When you're little, you don't know how to explain or they don't really care about the explanation because they're just so tired. They're just like, just stop causing problems, right? So and this isn't to blame parents, I think. A lot of parents, if you're good, if a good, if you're a good person, you try to do your best, mm -hmm. but it just ends up. I mean, it, you're gonna have times where it's just difficult. There's no like right or wrong way to do things. Mm -hmm. So I assume you had more arguments with your Filipino mom because you said your dad was more just swearing. Yeah, and the things your Filipino mom said to you were there. Like any memory or recollection where your mom is referencing Filipino culture as like how you should be or what you should be doing, mm -hmm. but then you got confused because yes, you're like culturally raised maybe as a Filipino kid, but mm -hmm. you're in America, right? Mm -hmm. Are there any things like that that you can share? Uh, I think part of it is the conservative culture of the Philippines. So for example, like clothing oh, that you would wear, right? Uh, my mom often, not often, sometimes she, she did comment on like what I was wearing or made me change, like, especially like for church, right? We go to church. She was oh, like, that yeah, skirt yeah. is too short or like you need to wear sleeves mm -hmm. or like, I remember if we, we were going on vacation to, the Vatican in Rome um, and you have to like cover your yeah, shoulders. Yeah, 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 like yeah. you have to dress conservatively. And so she was like, you need to make sure like you cover your shoulders and your skirt is long enough. Um, and I mean, sometimes like growing up, I wore like things that were like maybe too short to her. And so she didn't like it. So yeah. Um, and I think it, it's also more expected in Filipino culture to dress more conservatively, just you know, in general. So I think she kind of expected that. But then, you know, in the U.S., not that people don't dress conservatively. There are different, there are a lot of different cultures in the U.S., but that's much less of a big deal, mm. I think, for for parents. Yeah. What about behavioral things? Like maybe you're coming home late or maybe you were, <laughs> you're saying something back to her and yeah. like that's not culturally appropriate for Filipino family or I mean I feel like Asian families in general right you're not supposed to talk back to your parents oh, okay. maybe there's a more of an expectation in western families to have a back and forth maybe but I I don't know I'm not sure but at least in Filipino families right like your parents they have the authority mm -hmm. so you have to listen to them I mean as I got older right and then I started like staying out later, you know, my parents wouldn't appreciate that. Mm -hmm. My mom would like, if I came home too late, she would say like, Lumayaskana, like, Maniaskana? Lumayaskana, like, uh, it's like just, just like just go away just leave like <laughs> why like, is she if, it's why like is she like not, that like <laughs> if you're not listening to me fine or like if you're not gonna be <laughs> I don't know, man. but no but she's like yeah, yeah she's if, gonna if, be if you're done not gonna, with you well it's like yeah, yeah. if you're not gonna come home at this time i told you to come home then just don't come home and go away just leave like you know if you're not gonna listen to me right so yeah Wait, was it partly that. with our relationship <laughs> <laughs> I mean, probably so, some of them were, but I think a lot of them were like maybe hang out with friends or, you know, other things, right. That you do in your twenties. Mm -hmm. So yeah, she <laughs> would get mad and just tell me to like go away. But I feel like a lot of it is not that she even wants, like truly doesn't want me to go away. It's more just like, mm -hmm. I'm like really mad. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I want to make you feel bad. But yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like a guilt tripping right. you. Or something Which, like, like, you don't really understand as a kid. Like, you take everything more personally. Or at least now I, I understand, like, why she said that. Or that's just, like, how she expresses anger. Like, saying things like that. Yeah. Interesting. I think that makes sense. I mean, I did... <laughs> when I was, like, elementary school kid, I did leave home at, like, 3 a.m. To, <laughs> to line up at the okay, store to buy the Pokemon Gold and Silver. <laughs> So I would For line Pokemon. up. Yeah, so I would line up from three a.m. 
tell the opening yeah. of the store. And my dad was like, where are you going? But he. What do you mean? He was awake at 3 a.m.? Well, yeah, because he noticed I woke up. <laughs> but then he still let me go. Oh. Yeah. So I think that's another episode of. Were you already like one foot outside and he was like, whatever, I'm not going to stop you. No, I'm just kidding. Japan is so safe. Like uh, back in the time, it's like, I mean, yeah, it's weird that your kid is leaving at 3 a.m. But right. it's like. <laughs> okay it's weird yeah, it so weird. it's more than not it's more than weird but i was so like, like i was determined to buy that pokemon gold silver <laughs> on the day of the launch so i wanted to <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay but yeah back to you what are what are some other uh so besides coming home late i guess those are those are related to more gender expectation right like a cult like wearing clothes or coming home late i feel like if you're a boy mm. maybe it's like a little bit less of a concern but because you're a girl i mean my right? mom said some of those things like just do whatever you want to my brother too oh, okay, okay. so like if my brother wasn't listening but yeah i mean less expectation about clothing because okay, yeah, yeah yeah in general men don't uh, you know they usually cover up anyways yeah, like yeah, i mean yeah. there's only so many things you can wear that could be seen as potentially disrespectful right so did yeah. did did your filipino mom told your siblings anything different than they told you or that she's mad about same thing uh pretty similar okay but i don't know if that's i think that just might be very uncommon because my siblings and i in many ways have like similar personalities like we're obviously not the same there we have differences but we like we didn't have a troublemaker necessarily in the family, right? I mean, me and my brother was a little bit of a troublemaker, but I think you know he has, you know, he has his, like his own stuff, right? But there wasn't one of us that was like more out of line than the other, so okay. I felt like the discipline was pretty similar. But I mean, like you know, my uncles and aunts, my uh, my mom's youngest brother got into a lot of trouble like as a mm -hmm. kid and i think more trouble than like all the other siblings so mm -hmm. i think that's probably maybe more common than my situation where like we were pretty equally disciplined <laughs> so she didn't necessarily treat you different because you're the oldest child oh um maybe she had more expectations for me but i don't really ever remember her saying like oh you need to be like a role model for your um siblings, siblings but what but about it, comparing against like, it's yeah other cousin yeah actually but she had because like now i'm older right i'm like one of the i'm the oldest cousin on my mom's side mm. she does say like oh like try to help out your cousins and like give them advice and like you know all these things so she wants me to mm. take on more of like a almost like a mentor type role because a lot of them are much like younger than me right my siblings yeah. are more similar in age to me but so but she doesn't get angry about that it's more like okay. oh like you should try to have more of like a mentor type of role has she never told you like so and so is like doing this better and why aren't you doing it Oh, that's pretty common Asian parents thing. Um, I don't know if she might have, but I don't really remember a specific okay. conversation. I think she, I feel like, I don't know, maybe it's like a Filipino culture thing. I don't know. Maybe other Filipinos can let me know. Like if their parents compared them to their family friends, kids, but like never tell them to their face that they're being oh, compared, but like just like yeah, yeah, behind yeah, their yeah, back, yeah, like yeah, compare yeah, yeah. them, but like wouldn't tell them like, so I talked to blah, blah, blah. And like their kid is like going to Harvard. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, why yeah. aren't you going to Harvard and yeah. get it and becoming a doctor or something, you know? So. I mean, my Korean yeah. mom definitely did something like that. Not, not like mm -hmm. really strongly, but she would always tell me, my cousins were really smart. <laughs> <laughs> wow! And so who you're became dumb. who became saying. lawyers? Okay, right? Yeah. It's like like yeah. you know, so and so like going to this school and this and that. Like I'm like, no, I'm on my own, and I'm just gonna have my own value. I was <laughs> okay. I was pretty strong in that. Oh, uh, so you didn't feel like you were worse off than your cousins? No, but I know that it's a really common thing that Asian kids feel like oh like i'm worse off because i'm not as good as mm -hmm. this cousin or that cousin mm -hmm. i think i'm a little bit different i feel like mm -hmm. i'm super detached from 
those cultural expectations, probably because mm-hmm. I'm, I grew up under my Korean mom and Japanese dad and like living in the U.S. I feel like your US, parents are already like, pretty unconventional. They're pretty like, different, they yeah. They all defied conventional yeah. stuff. So I feel like it makes more sense that their child yeah. is not in the system in that way or yeah. affected as much by the system. Yeah. So I'm wondering, but my mom, my Korean mom would still tell me like, well, the Korean sons would like take care of. Oh, she's trying to guilt trip yeah, you yeah, when you're not doing you. something that you should as a yeah. as your child. <laughs> yeah, like Korean sons and the 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 daughter in law would like you know drive <laughs> you to this place and do this. And that. Like, she has that expectation, right? And she tells me that she's she's not a typical Korean mom, but she kind of. <laughs> what are you telling? You can't have it both ways. I'm like, I'm just kidding. They're like, well, I'm not a Korean. Children. <laughs> Wasn't there something like that to you where um, your parents expected, like, well, Filipino kid do this, and you're not doing it or something? Um, I think it's more if I misbehave, mm. um, or like I think it was more like when I talked back, my mom's like, "Why don't you behave more like a." Filipino child or you know like Filipino well I guess I don't I don't remember exactly what that meant maybe I should ask her maybe she she remembers that incident or maybe she doesn't I don't know it was a long time ago and I was like well I'm not born in the Philippines or like, so <laughs> like if you want me to act, so then I, that response came from well if you want me to act like someone from the Philippines and maybe I should have been born in the Philippines you yeah, know yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I grew up here and so I have a you know values and how i'm going to act is a little bit different because i'm american right so within with the ratio of you being like appreciative of like having this multicultural perspective especially as you get older versus the struggle and confusion that you went through like where would you say like you stand your experience because i know some asians who are like Asian Americans who are born here struggled all the way mm. and they wish they weren't Asian and they were white people mm. instead because that's where the life is at, right? Yeah. Um, versus some people are like, no, like I'm happy and I'm proud mm. of being Asian culture, culturally, you know, identify myself as Asian, even though I'm Asian American. Yeah. Where do you think your spectrum of identity and experience would fall? Like in terms of like struggle because mm-hmm. I'm Asian American, I'm confused mm-hmm. or I'm glad I'm, I have multicultural perspective and oh, have all okay. the yeah. experience. Yeah. I think definitely more on the appreciative of having a multicultural experience. I feel like I grew up with a good mix of like having a lot of like Asian friends Right. And but I also had friends that were white. I mean, I grew up right on the east side of Seattle where there was a lot of Asians, um, Mm -hmm. a lot of white people, too. And I think it was a good mix. And they were in general, like I, I feel like people were pretty like open to different cultures. Like I had friends who weren't Asian that were like open to trying like Filipino food and like to play video games, you know, Mm. JRPGs or like um, do activities that weren't like just American and feel like I was like never made fun of that or uh, I was like accepted for who I was. So I feel like maybe if I was bullied, I would have a different experience. Mm. But in general, like I, I did enjoy in general growing up with a lot of different perspectives and doing a lot of fun things that were like a mix of like american and asian culture so for me i think overall it was good i'm very um glad to have a very diverse perspective and like upbringing got it so the last question i have for you imagine fast forward in the future you have a kid Mm -hmm. and it's time to discipline them what do you, what would you imagine your style of like disciplining your children mm. or like a things that would come out of your mouth when you're like witness your kid doing something dumb and like you're like maybe furious about it and then like are you gonna say like some English words at them? Are you gonna say like some Filipino Tagalog 
words mm. or like you're just going to be mad but not say something or how how would you imagine yourself in the same spot that your parents were i mean in a way like people never think they're going to be like their parents but you're probably going to act like your parents when you're mm -hmm. angry with your own children right so i'll probably have some of that right i don't think i'll be angry in tagalog because tagalog is not my first mm -hmm. language right um but i think i'll probably exhibit a lot of the similar uh traits of anger that my parents had so um but i think one thing is it really depends like this one really depends on how old they are so if they're really young right you can't really just talk to them mm -hmm. like some of it is really just like you have to give them like a stern like you know talking to right about like why they shouldn't do that and just like you know stop them but then when they're older and you can actually they can actually ha reason and understand then i think it's really important to explain like why we do things or you don't do things um and at least like put that in their head right instead of just saying don't do that right or that's bad or are you dumb? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. why did you do that? You know, uh, that doesn't help them learn and, and be better. So, I mean, I, I just hope that I have patience, like when mm -hmm. I'm a parent to be able to do that. And I feel like at some times, like I'll have a short fuse and not have any energy to be mm -hmm. patient. So then I don't know, I guess if my future kid watches this, then yeah, I they understand yeah. that like if I get angry and it seems unreasonable, it's most likely because I'm tired, not because I want I'm a terrible human being. <laughs> yeah. I guess you have to subscribe for future episodes where <laughs> wow. we can report back on you saying something like, fine, be that way. Like, wow. you know, yeah, let's talk about in the <laughs> leave next, my house now. Let's talk about in the next episode how bad of a kid you were, just how much of a troublemaker you were. Wow. <laughs> Okay, so what was the word? I want to close with the word Which that you, one? you taught me. The two words that you taught me today. Oh, bahala ka sa buhay mo. What, what, one, more one more time? I don't know if you can say that whole thing. Bahala ka sa buhay mo. Bahala ka sa buhay mo. Bahala ka sa buhay mo. Yeah. Ka is like... I'm, I'm done like with just you? Do, No, it's more yeah. like I'll just like leave you to whatever, to like whatever X. Okay. Like just leave it. Uh, ka is like you. Okay. Like sa, ka, sa in like sa. buhai buhai is life buhai. and then like mo you mo you yeah yeah i'll leave it to your own life or like something sa, <laughs> in your life oh i think sa is more in, in i have to like break like down sa. each of the words yeah my understanding of tagalog is native so individual words sometimes give me trouble breaking down yeah okay what was the second word um numayaskana numayaskana <laughs> Like I hear a lot weird. of kana. Oh. Is it like a... It ka is like you. Oh, you. Na is like, like now. Pretty much like not now. Oh, yeah. the Like, you know, when you say like kumain kana. Yeah, kumain kana. Like, like, are you hungry? Uh, or you, did you eat yet? Uh, well, kumain kana is like... Yeah, if you ask like a question, like yeah. did you eat? Yeah, did you, did you eat, eat yet? Yeah. yeah. So lum, what was that? Lumais well, lumais kana. Lumais kana. <laughs> what was that meaning again? Uh, It's like... Just leave, go away. Okay, let yeah. Kind of... yeah. Got it. Well, you learn. Hopefully, you learn two <laughs> two important. How to be angry? How to, how to be angry at your children <laughs> in Tagalog? <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Well, make sure you subscribe because we have a episode coming out every single week, and make sure to hit the bell so you actually get notified when we have episode that comes out. We also have YouTube Shorts and the TikTok accounts for you to follow more fun videos there. So until next time, bye.